Hey, good Monday morning, my friends. This is MLive Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrossa. Hopefully you had a great weekend. Hopefully you had some rain. I wouldn't say it was a great rain. Uh, last night's rain across parts of lower Michigan, about a tenth to a third of an inch. Other spots over time, uh, over the weekend, with the heavier thunderstorms, some spots got a half inch, inch. Some spots got two inches. But generally, I would say that a lot of folks got missed out on the rainfall. Now, what's left? Uh, here we are with the current radar and the last bits of showers just starting to push out of the Detroit area. We'll be out of Dearborn here in the next half hour and out of the uh, northeast side of Detroit here in the next half hour. And then it should be mostly a dry day on the way. Let's get into the forecast here. Hey, and by the way, I can see you this morning. So good morning to Stacy Elizabeth from Cadillac and Ronald Johnson from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Good morning. And Renee Fountain, thanks for watching. Denise Langworthy, good morning to you also. All right, so here is the radar forecast. And uh, this was the rain that pushed through overnight. And now we go into this afternoon and nothing doing except for maybe scattered showers coming off of Saginaw Bay and off of Lake Huron into the thumb. You can see that right there in the uh, six, seven, eight o'clock time period. So Grand Rapids, you're dry and Traverse City, you're probably dry. Traverse City area maybe gets a little burst off of the Grand Traverse Bay also. Uh, Lansing should be dry. Detroit, you might get into those spotty showers as we go to the evening hours, but that's about it. And then we go overnight and it's dry, and we go into Tuesday, and Tuesday should be dry too. You know, Michigan, now we're into the summer equivalent of the winter. Winter, you could always have a flurry here or there in Michigan because of lake effect. Um, Pamela... Todorov is Mich Southeast Michigan out of drought now. No, no, not at all. There may be some localized spots that got one or two inches of rain, but no, you'd still need uh, four or five inches of rain to get out of drought. Um, and then in the summer equivalent, you can get a stray shower here or there, but 98% of the area will stay dry. Uh, yes, great day for golf. And uh, now we're into Wednesday. And Wednesday is dry also. So I said in my headline that eventually turning wetter. Now we see it on the European model. Let me make sure the perspective is good for you here. And it it is, all right, um, <laughs> for a Monday. So this is tonight and Tuesday. And Wednesday is dry. And Thursday, the southwesterly wind returns. We get a warm-up, not quite into the 90s, it looks like. Um, but it looks like we'll see temperatures bursting into the 80s. And then the models are showing uh, a disturbance coming across with rain on Friday. And then what I want to show you is the cool down coming. Um, if you look at this, you can kind of pick out uh, look at the red lines, and you see a 14 in northern Indiana, then a 12, then a 10 across the Grand Rapids area. Then an 8 and a 6 and a 4 across the UP, and even, yeah, a 4 across the UP. So those are temperatures in Celsius at about 5,000 feet up, and they give us a way to tell what it's going to be like at the ground. And when you've got uh, 10, 8, 6 Celsius, you're talking some low 70s and upper 60s for high temperatures. Hey, good morning, uh, Joyce Peterson and Mimi Noonan. Uh, good morning. So then Sunday would be cool also. And then everything wants to indicate that kind of flare-up of storms between cool and hot to the south. And this would be early the following week, be about a week from now, uh, where maybe a significant storm system could move through and another on its heel. So the point being is that we're maybe going to start to get into a little bit more regular 
of a storm track. All right, look at these temperatures now. Today's highs in the mid-70s in the south, low 70s in the north. And tomorrow in the low to mid-70s. And Wednesday, low to mid-70s. Uh, Doug Taylor's Father's Day going to be dry. Let's go back to Father's Day. That's a good question. And right now, it looks like Father's Day would be, uh, that's early afternoon on Father's Day, and that's Father's Day evening. So right now, it looks like it would be two-thirds dry and stellar. And if we got some rain coming in, it would be in the second half of the afternoon. All right, back to temperatures. Thursday, like I said, Thursday will warm up back into the 80s, but then Friday, uh, maybe 90 in the south, 70 in the north. Joanne Samp, I just talked about Father's Day, looks like uh, pretty good so far. But when we get into these more regular rains, those things can speed up. So it's uh, ways out on the exact timing of rainfall. Friday, and then look at Saturday, temperatures dropping back to the 70s, 60s to the north, 50s for highs in the UP, hmm, maybe. Uh, and then Father's Day in the low to mid 70s. And Monday of next week, 60s and 70s, and Tuesday, low 70s, and Wednesday back to 80s. So, in other words, we do have some cooler weather uh, definitely on the way. All right, now here is the last thing I'll leave you with, and this is the total rainfall off of the European model. This is in the ensemble mode. I like that mode right now. Um, that's where they run it 30-something different times and average them all together. Uh, John Kleinschmidt, how does Saturday look? My granddaughter has a graduation open house. Right now, Saturday looks great. Friday looks like the rain. Saturday looks like a cooler, comfortable day, a great day for a graduation open house. Uh, back to the uh, total rainfall. This part right here has already happened. So you got to kind of take that out of your mind, you know, subtract off. Now, this is the Friday rain. And so it's showing, you know, a quarter to a half inch. And remember, this model does not produce or predict the thunderstorm amounts, the heavier convection that can be double or triple in a heavy thunderstorm. It just predicts the general rainfall. And then early next week, getting into some rain, shoving us over an inch. And then as we go out into late next week, it continues to build it up. And as we go out to about uh, 16 days, it says that we're going to have some rain, actually. You know, not uh, abundant amounts. Hey, Alto, Alto, good morning to you. Um, so that's some good news is that we could certainly use regular rains at this time of the year now. All right, so there you have it. The rain is done. Enjoy the cooler weather for several days. A little warm up on Thursday, some rain on Friday. And it may be a cooler weekend coming up, but we'll keep you updated on that. Uh, Joanne Samp, uh, good morning to you. And hey, Alto, are we on for golf today? If I get my work done here at MLive, I will be on for golf with you. And uh, I will contact you a little later to let you know how I'm pacing. Today I'm going to be uh, writing on MLive here about Lake Mead at its lowest level since 1930. And then I'm going to give you a preview of the week ahead. Of course, you just had that because you joined me. So maybe you don't have to read. Maybe you do. But take care. Thanks for joining me. I'm MLive, Morning, uh, I'm MLive Chief Meteorologist Mark Torrosa. It is Monday, isn't it? Yes, it is. So you take care. Have yourselves a great Monday.